Installation instructions for the DS2C thermostat controller. First start out by removing the cover screws and set them aside for later reinstallation. Once all the screws are removed, you can access the inside of this control box. No wiring takes place inside of this control box. There will be a separate box for that. Now there's going to be uh, five small dip switches inside here near where you see the, uh, the red uh, plastic tool that's used for adjusting. Set all of the dip switches to the off position and then you'll be able to locate the one identified as LTC, that's the low temp cutout. Set that to the back to the on position. Do not adjust any of the factory settings for the thermostat on or any of the delay. We've turned the delays off and the thermostat should be left preset for it's about at 38, 39. Replace the cover and we're ready for the next uh, step. And uh, once you've tighten down all the screws. Make sure you don't over tighten them. That will warp the cover and may allow water to infiltrate into the box which could void the warranty on it. So don't over tighten those screws. And just tight so they're snug up. Once you've done that then uh, decide whether or not you're going to use half inch or three quarter inch liquid tight fittings. If it's half inch you can use that the black fitting that's already in there. It's set up for that. Otherwise three quarter inch remove it. That's what we do because most of our installs uh, involve three-quarter inch liquid tight so screw in your liquid tight uh, fitting into uh, place snug it up and uh, then you'll be ready to install a piece of liquid tight flexible conduit <coughs> generally we cut that about six inches long uh, for our installations you can use a hard offset and and glue everything in place as well but uh, we commonly use liquid tight it makes for a much easier installation so six inches you can go up to about eight or ten inches even on that if you prefer there's enough lead coming out of the box for that uh, snug up your liquid tight uh, up to your liquid tight flexible conduit up to your liquid tight fitting it helps to rotate it in place and once you've done that, uh, you can install your next straight liquid tight fitting onto the bottom of it to go into your uh, junction box. Simple twist and we can snug it up, lock it in place. Either a 4x4x2 or 5x5x2 junction box is suitable for this application. Uh, use a step drill or hole drill to get uh, the proper size hole to uh, thread your liquid tight fitting into. Uh, drill and then you can remove the cover on your PVC box. Use PVC. Uh, the scepter boxes seem to be very decent for this. Uh, the covers do not warp out as easily, especially if they're in direct sunlight. Uh, some of the other boxes found at the big box stores, uh, the orange store, the blue store, uh, some of those boxes, uh, uh, the covers warp out on them in direct sunlight and let water in. So use a good quality junction box. I avoid the metal ones with the foam gaskets because those gaskets sometimes wear out or don't stay sealed well. Uh, so I prefer the scepter boxes. We drill a secondary hole for where we're going to bring in our liquid tight conduit for our heat cable assembly. We'll have a separate video for that hole installation, uh, but that's why we're drilling the second hole for that so that we can bring our heat cable also through liquid tight into this junction box. Once we've got uh, all the holes drilled, we can thread that box onto uh, our assembly here.
it's important to snug up the uh, this lock washer uh, securely so as uh, not to allow water and there's a, a rubber uh, grommeter bushing on top there uh, at the liquid tight fitting where it snugs up against the junction box make sure you tighten that down well and it may also be a good idea uh, to uh, caulk around that top fitting uh, where it meets the junction box uh, so that uh, no water gets in. You can cut uh, the leads six to seven inches. Uh, six inches is required by code for power input. Uh, so your power supply coming in, all the leads will be six inches. Strip back the wires accordingly. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can start the assembly. So uh, follow the provided instructions. Uh, this can be wired at uh, 120 volt or 240 volt. The controller automatically detects the voltage and uh, uses that for the power supply uh, to supply the controller as well. So uh, follow the installation guidelines. The yellow wires in effect are the switch <coughs> so that the power will go in through there, uh, be turned on and off based on temperature conditions uh, outside. We'll cover that in a little while. Make sure all the wires are twisted and very snugly secured a failure to snug these uh, wires up can result in uh, arcing within the box. Uh, it can result in some problems uh, as well or even failure of the controller. So you want to make sure everything is snugged up and uh, done well uh, there so that there are no problems. When the system needs to be on, it'll be on. Uh, generally, a, a good tug on that will tell you whether or not uh, everything is snugged up and I've used the white and black wires in here just as reference so that you see uh, that the, how the wiring is done in the 240 volt application uh, you can just use the uh, uh, two hots so you'll have two black wires instead make sure everything's properly grounded um, and use equipment ground fault protection as required by the heat cable manufacturer now when the system has power coming to it, uh, it'll be a solid light. When it's energized the heat cables, the light will blink. Uh, and you can turn it manual on for testing. That's what you saw blinking there. But uh, you can also uh, turn it to auto. It will only start blinking when the cables are energized at the proper temperature. Thank you.